In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this anniversary cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. Real quick, if you just wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters listed below. So this week I am making an anniversary cake for a 45th anniversary. And I just wanna let you know that this is a voiceover tutorial and I have other videos showing you going into deeper explanation, <laughs> if you will, of how I do some of the techniques used on this cake and I will link those in the description. And also linked will be the tools and supplies that I use as well. And just to make a note, I am starting off with all three tiers iced in buttercream and I refrigerate all of my cakes. There's something in my eye. <laughs> so all of my cakes are refrigerated. That way the icing is solid when I work with them and I'm not gonna mess it up. I have videos showing you how I ice cakes and how I work with refrigerated cakes and those will also be listed. Everything is just listed in the description. <laughs> and I will also let you know how much I charge for this beauty. And before we get started, I just want to thank you all. Welcome to my new subscribe. Blech, why is it so hard to say? Welcome to my new subscribers and to you who have been here for so long supporting me. I thank you. I'm still having so much fun doing this and helping you guys out. So let's get into the video. To start, I am making the petal waffles. I have a cookie sheet here so I could put them on there. My hands are clean. I have some marshmallow fondant with some Tylos powder. I put Tylos powder in all of my fondant. There is some in here, so I don't need it. I just want to show you, you sprinkle it on there, knead it together, let it sit for like 10 to 20 minutes so the Tylos powder can start working and then you could start to use it. So let's roll this out. And you wanna get it really thin when you're making these petal ruffles. So I keep turning it and then rolling it out a little more until it is really thin. And now I have this little foam pad and a metal ball tool and this little cutter. Everything will be linked below. And I just wanna cut the petals out, rub it on my hand to get rid of any extra um, pieces of fondant that would be sticking out. I have some water and a paintbrush. So once I cut it out, I'm going to take the ball tool and have half the metal on the petal, half the metal on the foam and thin out the edges. And now I'm gonna get a little bit of water in the middle of the bottom petal and I'm gonna stack the top petal in between the petals you see it's not directly on top and then i'm making the claw <laughs> and just pinching it together at the bottom to form like a little tail that way that's how i'm making all the ruffles so i'm going to repeat the process but i'm not going to make them all individually what i'm going to do is cut a bunch of the petals out and then i'm going to thin all of the edges and then I will put them all together. So again, make sure you stagger the top one on top of the bottom one. And then pinch it together at the bottom to form the petal. I have a full tutorial on how to do this and I will link it below. So how did I know how much, how many to make? My, I, the circumference of my cake was 30 inches and the, it was four and a half inches tall. So I measured this, this is 15 inches wide. So, I'm going to need twice as tall if it's only 15 inches wide, nine inches tall. I should have enough ruffles. I just got this out of the fridge. The icing is solid. I'm not gonna mess it up. Let's mark an arrow pointing towards the front of the cake so I know where the front is and wipe the excess icing cleaning off the cake board. Now, I let this sit out just a little bit. You could see that it is a little soft, but it's still holding its shape. I have some piping gel and I wanna get a generous amount of piping gel around the entire side of the cake so I could stick the ruffles to it and then find the back, and this is where I'm gonna start. So for the very bottom row, I cut that little tail off. Um, I just feel like it doesn't need it on the bottom. I don't know, use my Dresden tool and push it into the cake. Super simple with this. And again, I do have that tutorial where I explain in full detail how I do this, and I will link that in the description. And where you get to where it meets, you just kinda gotta kinda make the piece fit in there. And now for the upper rows, I do keep the tail on. That way it can anchor into the buttercream and use my Dresden tool to push it in. And you just have to find where the petals fit the best and look the best and just kind of piece it together like a puzzle. And again, I have to move some of the petals out of the way to fit it 
as it's getting towards the end. Now, when I get to the top, I don't want to mess the top up. So do you see how I'm pushing it down a little bit? I'm not sticking it directly into the cake. I'm kind of just seeing where I can push it <laughs> so it covers the top of the cake without ruining the top of the cake. And I know that might not make any sense. And again, this will be explained in the full tutorial that I have. And it was, uh, I needed a little more piping gel because it wasn't sticking. So I just put a little bit more piping gel and you see how I'm getting some, that one was too big. So I have to find one that fits, you know, it's just all about like piecing this little pedal puzzle together. <laughs> and beautiful, it's all done. Let me put that back in the fridge. Now let's cover this top tier in fondant. This is just out of the refrigerator, so I'm not gonna mess up the icing. Now I'm gonna get piping gel around the entire outside and then dip my paintbrush in a little water to thin out the piping gel. It just makes it a little easier. I don't know, <laughs> I, that's, I just like to do it that way. Take a paper towel, wipe the board so the fondant doesn't stick to this. Look how smooth this fondant is. It has Tylos powder in it. I have videos on how I get the, my um, fondant smooth and how I cover cakes in fondant in full, a full tutorial. So everything will be linked below. And I'm just getting the fondant on top of the cake, pulling it out so I can remove any of the wrinkles. And using my fondant smoother to press the fondant on the sides all the way down to the board using my little weird pinch technique that's covered in my videos and smoothing it out using my smoother, using a piece of fondant, making it look nice and pretty. Let's put that back in the fridge. And I wanna do the same thing for the middle tier. So I'm getting piping gel all around the outside of the cake and then gonna thin that out with some water. This blue, again, it's so smooth. I have a video showing you how I get a dark royal blue that will be linked below as well. And do the same process, roll it out, cover the cake, you know, remove the wrinkles as you're smoothing it down, smooth the sides, you know the process. All right, now let's make the lace. Um, the lowest my oven goes is 175, so you want your oven to be 150 to 175. I have this lace mat here. I'm not sure where I got it. I could try to find it. And I found some pre-mixed lace. You can also get this lace here that isn't mixed. You have to mix it yourself, but I anything to save time. So I found this on Amazon. I will link it below, and you just mix it up and spread it on. What I'm doing, I wanna make sure that all of the cavities are filled. So I'm putting a lot on right now and then I will scrape the excess off a little later. So you gotta kind of get close, make sure that none of the cavities are open and just cover the entire thing with the lace mix. And I will try to find this. I, I, I don't know if I could find this exact one, but there are tons of lace mats online that you can buy. So I'm scraping off the excess and wiping it back into that little jar. You want the blue to be showing through because you want it to look like lace. You want, you want it to have holes in it, basically. And once that's done, I'll put it in the oven for about 12 minutes, and then I will take it out, and I wanna let it cool for 10 minutes. And now I wanna to put on a second coat. So I like doing two coats with my lace. I don't know if it's necessary. However, I just feel like it's not so delicate when there's two coats. It's a little bit thicker and it can hold its shape a little better. And again, once you have that on there, you wanna scrape all the excess off. Put it back in the oven. Let's do 15 minutes this time. And then while that's in there, my hands are clean and I wanna remove this cake from the tape on the board, put it on a new board. Just know that it could slide off. So I have to be real careful when I'm handling it. I wanna put the glitter on. So I have it on a cookie sheet. I have some piping gel here and I wanna get a generous amount of piping gel on the outside and on the top of the cake because I want all this glitter to be able to stick to it. And I don't want any missing uh, open parts showing. So try to get piping gel on the entire thing. 
and especially at the bottom because you want it to stick at the bottom. I got these online. I can find them and link them below. And I gloved my one hand and I'm just pouring the sprinkles or glitter all over the cake. Well, I'm putting them in my hand and then pressing it onto the cake. And I use the excess that's on the board and push it on the cake as well. And also make sure you get the top. And I just want to make sure there's no open spaces. It's pressed on there really well. Be careful because it's not really sticking to the board and put that back in the fridge. And now I can take this out and let that cool for another 10 minutes before I flip it over and try to peel this out of here. So I have a palette knife and I'm peeling the mold back and away from the lace. And as I do that, as it starts to stick out, I'm using my palette knife to carefully peel this away from the mold. This process is, is a little time consuming and lengthy, but if you take the time to peel it away, then you're not gonna break the pieces. And just set those aside. And now let's paint this top tier gold. I have Rollcom Super Gold and some lemon extract. I will link all of this in the description below. Get a little bit of powder in the cup, add some extract, and then I'm going to mix it together and paint it on the cake. So I'm painting top to bottom and on all the way down the sides. I'm going to paint the top of the cake. Just make sure that you get all of the areas and that none of that like uh, other gold shows through. And put that back in the fridge. Now I have a clay gown with a round disc. I'm going to get some Crisco in that little area and put some fondant in there and squeeze it out. I'm making the border for the middle tier. Let that set aside. And I'm going to stack the cake. I have a full stacking tutorial and I will link that below on how I stack the cakes. I measure my straws, cut my straws, get the straws in the bottom tier and get some buttercream on and then wash my hands. My hands are clean and stack this next tier on top of it. Make sure it's center and make sure it's level and repeat the process again, measuring for the straws and putting the straws in the cake, getting some more buttercream down. You see the process. And now I wanna dowel this cake. So I'm cutting a little piece of fondant out so the dowel can fit in, fill that with some icing and then put that little piece of fondant back on top. And all of this is explained in my stacking tutorial. and paint it gold and now you can barely even see that. Now I'm going to mark the back of the cake so I know where to start and stop that border and I'm getting a little bit of piping gel all around the perimeter and sticking this little border on. Where it meets in the back, cut it and then just press the seam together. Now getting a little piping gel on the back of that and I'm starting at the very front of my cake so I can center the pattern to the front of the cake. And getting some Crisco now. So for all the other pieces, I wanna get a little Crisco behind them and place them on the cake. Crisco is very forgiving so I can easily remove these and get them into the correct position before I put them down with some piping gel. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to move these into a better position. So I'm going to remove one, get rid of that extra Crisco and now paint the entire back with piping gel and center that and stick that back down onto the cake. And I'm going to press all the sides down, make sure that none of the sides are sticking out. So now I'm going to do that for all the pieces. I'm going to get piping gel on the back and stick it back down. And once they're all down, I'm just going to make sure that they are all sticking down. No pieces are sticking out from the sides. And put that back in the fridge. Now I'm gonna make the topper. So I have a non-skid pad underneath my cutting board. I have an X-Acto knife that I, with a wet paper towel that I can wipe off. I have a Dresden tool and some water and a paintbrush. I rolled this gold out pretty thin. There is Tyler's powder mixed in with this. I printed out the 75, the size that I want it to be. Trace it with the Dresden tool and transfer that line onto the fondant and cut the number out of the fondant. 
And anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take my fingers, take my tools and smooth my cuts. Realign that back on top and let's do the same thing for the five, cutting it out and smoothing the cuts. Perfect, now I have this circle cutter that is that 75 is gonna fit in there. I have some white fondant rolled out pretty thin and I'm just gonna cut that circle out and again, smooth my cut. So even when I use cutters, I smooth my cuts because it's usually just a little jagged. Now I have blue fondant rolled out pretty thick. I'm gonna get some water on the back of the white and stick that down on the blue fondant and use my little cutter to, to make sure that that is in the correct position. And I wanna paint the 75 gold. So I like to use a little tapping motion when I have little pieces like this that slide all over the place. It's a little easier. Make sure you get all the edges as well. And I wanna have an even border around here. So I have a little bigger circle cutter and I'm carefully cutting this out. And you see how dirty those edges are. So I'm just pressing the fondant back down and smoothing out my cuts. I have this on a cutting board now and I wanna screw in the skewer. So I'm twisting it and not just jabbing it in there cause I want this to sit on the top of the cake. So do you see I'm twisting the skewer and I have my hand down on the top making sure it's not poking out. Now I realized that it's their 45th anniversary, not their 75th. If it was the 75th, they would have been a hundred something years old. I'm so glad I double checked. I'm like, this doesn't sound right. <laughs> so I did the same thing with the four. I traced it on the fondant, cut it out, painted it, painted it gold. Get a little bit of piping gel on the back. Once I put them down in the position and saw where I wanted them to be. So they are center in that little white circle. Do the same thing for the five. Now I'm going to make a C and B monogram topper instead. I have white fondant rolled out pretty thick and I'm going to trace this on there. So I'm tracing just a little outside of the line of the letter because I want the letter to be a little thicker than what has been printed. Whenever I cut anything out of thick fondant, I use my knife and make a shallow cut. I'm not cutting the whole way down, but now I can use that, that line as a guide. Now I'm sticking my knife all the way down to the board and I'm gonna cut the entire thing out of the fondant. This fondant does have Tylos powder mixed in with it. It must because it has to dry hard if it's gonna sit on top of the cake. And again, flip it over and smoothing my cuts and making sure this topper is nice and pretty. I'm gonna realign it back on top and do the same thing for the other letters and that little end. Now I'm not using this as the topper anymore, so I'm going to unscrew that skewer and I have to make this a little thinner, it's way too thick. So I'm just getting a knife and I wanna cut this in half. So I'm using my line as a guide and holding the knife even and just trying to cut that bottom half off and making it a little thinner, perfect. And just setting that aside. And now I have my cake out of the refrigerator and let's put this on the front. So it's the front of the cake. I'm using two toothpicks behind it to anchor them. You see how I'm putting them down on an angle? So the points are gonna stick up and it's gonna prevent that from falling off. Get a little bit of icing on the back or you can use piping gel if you want. And I'm pushing it down on the toothpick so that thing ain't going nowhere. All right, so I forgot to film. So when I let these dry, I flip them over overnight and let them dry with the back part facing up and then flip them over again. And I put skewers in them before they dried. So with the C, I can't stick the skewer straight up because you would be able to see it. I have to stick it in there on an angle. I want it to go through the bottom where it's gonna touch the cake and go up on an angle. I have some snips here and I have to trim the bottom of the skewers because they're gonna be way too long to go into the cake. Now I wanna hold them up and see where they're gonna look best to go into the cake. And look, you see how I stick the C in on an angle? If I do it straight, the C is gonna be crooked. So I put the B down and then the C goes in on an angle. Nope, I gotta move it a little over to the left and that is perfect. Put the little end in the middle and I have to put that on an angle too because you can see the toothpick a little bit. So just readjusting that. And now I have this poppy anemone and I love these. I buy them on Amazon. I, they're so pretty and I will link them below. And I'm just going to get a little straw on the back and cut it a little longer than the stem. And I'm gonna stick it into the cake. I'm gonna sink it down and then I want to countersink the straw. 
and fill the little straw with some icing and that's gonna help hold the flower on there and push that in, rearrange the petals and make it look all nice and pretty. And here is the cake. And real quick, I am delivering this and I was nervous about the toppers breaking during delivery. I have a little cutting board underneath to keep it flat and I'm storing them in there. And I wrapped up the cake without the toppers on and I will put them on as soon as I arrive at the venue. So there you go. How beautiful is this cake? I just love the colors. That blue really pops with the gold. So I have a few things that I want to go over. Uh, number one, this cake did not take me 19 minutes to make. <laughs> Uh, with the magic of editing, it looks like it comes together so quick. However, just making those white petal ruffles for the bottom tier was almost three hours. And to put them on the cake was probably another 45 minutes to an hour to arrange them on there. And with the lace mats, that took about 45 minutes every time I used it because I do two coats. You have to bake it. You have to let it dry. So that was about another hour and a half. I would say total was probably about... 10 to 11 hours just to decorate the cake. Now the sizes for this cake, the top tier is five inch, the middle tier is a three layer seven inch, and then the bottom tier is a nine inch cake. I have a video talking about how I do different heights and different size tiers, and I will link that in the description as well. But this cake feeds about 50 to 60 people. And how much did I charge? This one was $750. I also forgot to make a note that the topper, the font that I used is called Sweet Shine. It's also the font that I use in my thumbnails. I do have videos on how I make toppers and stuff in more detail. I forgot to mention that, so I will link that below. And I ran into a little issue with this cake because she, she originally asked for the monogram on the front and the number on the top. And you see how I made that topper, the number topper, and I had to change it. I didn't like how it looked. And I contacted her and I just asked her if she would be okay with me modifying the design a little bit. And she said, I'm totally not picky. Anything that you decide to do is great. And I'm so glad that she ended up really liking it. And again, like I showed you at the end, I had to deliver this cake. I took the toppers off. It's so much better. It's just peace of mind to be able to remove the toppers and put them on when you get to the venue. The venue was about 35 minutes away and I just didn't want to take the chance of going over a bump and that C cracking in half. So it's just so much <laughs> better if you wrap up the topper separately and deliver it like that if you're worried about them breaking. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can get in touch with me on social media and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.